begrüße das Publikum hier im Saal, die Menschen, die am Streaming teilnehmen. Wir freuen uns über jeden, der versucht, uns zuzuhören bei äh, einer kleinen Diskussion rund um das Festival-Thema, das da heißt Einmischen, Poetry for Future. Ähm, dass uns die Zukunftsfragen gerade sehr stark bedrängen, ist irgendwie, glaube ich, jedem klar. Aber was und wie können wir uns einmischen? Wie kann sich die Poetry einmischen? Wie kann sich die Kunst einmischen? Wie mischt sich die Kultur ein? Außer, dass sie sich jetzt beschwert darüber, dass äh, ihnen die Gelder gestrichen werden und dass es keine Möglichkeiten gibt, sich zu äußern oder erheblich weniger Möglichkeiten gibt, dass alles, äh, alle Angst haben vor der Zukunft. I greet everybody who is uh, on the stream and on, uh, in the panel here. I, we have gathered a very distinguished panel. I'm really proud to see all these people here on the stage. Um, beginning from Svante Lichtenstein, whose performance we saw yesterday and who led a wonderful workshop. Uh, Birgit Kempke from Switzerland. Tristan Marquardt from uh, Munich, from the Meine Drei Lyrischen Ichs, who performed yesterday as well. Tang Siu Wan uh, uh, was uh, traveling all around the world uh, to, from Hong Kong to be our guest here at the Shamrock Festival, and Anja Utler, who uh, um, has been a friend of the festival for a long, long time and is a very distinguished poet, as everybody knows, I think. So, I've, uh, uh, the panel, uh, this, uh, the people on the panel were asking me, well, what are we actually talking about? Or what is this about? And I, I was sort of, I felt it almost like an awkward question because I couldn't answer it exactly. I feel with uh, the overall situation now, not only with COVID, but the, um, the theme of the festival was uh, actually proposed by Anja Utler. Uh, came way before the COVID uh, crisis started and was more uh, turned to the political and uh, uh, overall climate situation that we are facing in the future. And everything seems to have become even more terrifying in many ways. So I would like to begin by asking Tang Siu Wa, uh, We are wearing these yellow masks, and they have a very special meaning to people in Hong Kong. Could you please explain it to us, what these letters on the mask mean? Okay, okay. Um, thanks, Cal. Uh, thanks, Kelly. And this is actually, um, uh, this mask is, um, is a, a gift from one of my friends, and when she knows that I, I um, decided to travel to, uh, travel to um, Munich, this years and she said oh as a pleasant and to and the kind of sh uh, so, so so usage so social connection usage you should bring some and uh, give this to to the, as a gift to all the friends and what i want to explain this about the, uh, uh, the this is um, actually it is the color of um, revolution in hong kong that uh, start from 2014 it's yellow and we are wearing uh, use, um, the yellow umbrella as, um, as the symbol of revolution in 2014. And this color had in, inherited to 2019 revolution. Um, there's a man who um, suicide and get suicide in the revolution. He, he, he's standing um, with, uh, with, um, with a banner writing five demands that uh, five demands that and in in ju just um, on the on the floors of the one uh, shopping uh, shopping mall and he's wearing a yellow raincoat and and didn't turn back to let us see his face and after that he jumped down and just wants to um, they he just want want us Hong Kong guys to insist on the five demands And the five demands actually is a very basic, um, basic demands actually is very mild, and it is, um, pro, um, it is just uh, we we speak out this in the very beginning of the revolution. That, uh, but um, the one demand of it is fulfilled. 
because uh, the government withdraw the law. This one, one of the five demands have withdrawn, uh, has fulfilled. But um, what we're talking about is five demand, no one left. And we have um, refused the negotiation or compromise to the uh, government. That's why our revolution um, still remained um, in, in solidarity. And we didn't split because we uh, refused, and in the very beginning, we refused the, um, the compromise and negotiation, um, some uh, deep, evil deal with the, <laughs> with the government. Okay, so, um, and this, so the color is yellow. It is a revolution color. And with the initial here, we have five demands, no one less. Okay, it has a gesture, five demands, no one less, okay. <laughs> it's very simple, and um, you can do it in, um, b uh, before the national, national security law, uh, uh, all the um, uh, underground indie band shows, are, oh, everyone is just, <laughs> no matter what the singer sings, and everyone uh, uh, downstairs is just, just holding, holding the gesture like this. Uh, actually, this, um, this is a, already be, being a symbol of um, identity of Hong Kongers. So this with the um, five demand, no one less. And um, why we have this kind of uh, mass is just because um, at the beginning of the COVID-19, uh, COVID um, and we, um, Hong Kong government is failed to, um, failed to um, purchase a large amount of masks to Hong Kong. And this is totally unacceptable to, to our Hong Kong people because we are a, such a merchandise city, okay? Even my colleagues can, can purchase masks. How can, I don't, I don't know how this, the government will fail to purchase masks. And Hong Kong merchandisers and a small entrepreneurs start to uh, produce masks by themselves. And so there, there's masks which carry the um, symbols of revolution and Hong Kong identity in this. And my friends tell me to uh, bring you all to as a small gift from Hong Kong and and share right. our share our solidarity. And um, okay. I think this um, uh, the the this very difficult question uh, you, you asked in such panel. And the I think that the future is to us is very bird and um, cannot be optimistic to to my extent but what we can see the what we can see the hope or some lights of change is is just on 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 all these people that they are willing to uh, step step out to make their things uh, when when they they are when they they see a need any needs of others and they try to um, step out and do things. I think this this um, just like um, just just like the spirit of poetry, and which is when you get worse and don't abandon it, just get try to catch it and write it, and this is a kind of action we the writer should do, and maybe now, it's the future. We know that you are uh, like uh, not only a poet, but an activist, a journalist, an essayist, and uh, the situation in Hong Kong uh, sort of draws you into um, putting that within your scope of uh, cultural and political work, so that comes sort of natural. With us, it's, uh, we don't have this type of political system that puts this kind of pressure on us. And I wonder sometimes, uh, where has like the Brechtian Lehrgedicht gone? Where, where are these, these types of outspoken literature and poetry? Um, do I just not see it? We had like an example yesterday from Antje Graye with, uh, with her video and, and spoken, spoken word work where she was very outspoken, very direct. It's, it was not a, a language that was um, uh, carrying hidden messages. So I was uh, going to ask Swantje Lichtenstein, who's a professor for aesthetic practice, as I understand, how how do you see anything how the uh, how poetry how how well let's let's let, let's um, take the word poetry in a broader sense like like the festival also shows with including performing arts and uh, video arts electronic music all that put together do you see anything politicized here in that 
again, broader body? I, I, I thank you for the question and thank you for the explanation <clears throat> about the yellow mask. Um, and I just thought, since you ended with a, with a sentence about the hidden messages, um, or, or the other way around, you um, ended with a poetry that, that can be, um, is able to do something in the time right now. And, and you said poetry is about hidden messages. And I thought, yeah, maybe it's all about hidden messages that we, they, they, they are, I mean, there are a lot of hidden messages and a lot of hidden knowledge and a lot of hidden wisdom and a lot of, of, of freedom or the, the asking for freedom of speech right now. And I think that's exactly what poetry is about. And it's not a problem that there, some things are hidden. It's a problem that you're not listening and that you're not willing to learn languages and that you're not willing to, to, to ask for explanation if you don't know. It's like, I think it's something what, what activists around the world, and, and I would say there are a lot of people who, who think there is a lot to do right now in Germany as well, I mean, politically. And, and I think it's, all around the world, people want to be listened to that are not, were not uh, listened to for hundreds of years because there is a thinking of, if you just say it clear and there is, uh, um, everybody would understand, but that's not true. It's like maybe this maleish, um, Eurocentric point of view that everything is clear. It's never clear if you, you always have to ask for, for things that you don't know. And specifically if you are not part of the community, specifically if you don't know the language, if the translation is really bad, like often in poetry, <laughs> I had like, like, like poems that I wrote that were like, I don't know, this long, and then I heard on a festival the, 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 the translation, it was only three lines. I thought, something must have been missed here in the translation. And I think it's fine that poetry is a hidden language, and maybe it, every language is a hidden language, and, and there's a lot to, to be learned out of, of this. And there's, I think it's a time for asking and, and listening and and. I mean, just to stop that, that we think we would have all the answers and that we would know everything. We just know so little. I mean, like about the yellow mask. Why don't we know? I mean, I think I remember something with the, with the yellow coat and the, but you know, it's a symbol. But if we wouldn't have asked about the hidden message, about the, 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 the four letters, about the, the color, about the whole situation, we wouldn't, it's just hidden, but not because it's hidden, because it's all over the world, and uh, like Hong Kong is quite a big community, and a big uh, uh, um, city and, yeah. and country, but still we don't know because it's hidden, because we are not so much interested in the target show, maybe it's just a voice to, to, um, to show it on television or something. So I think it's, that's so good, and I think it's also always good that, that poetry makes us questioning things, and uh, that's what poetry is all about. And that's, that also brings people together from all over the world. I mean, that's also something which is really nice in this community, because you have a common understanding somehow, even if we are so different, even if we're so different in what we do, it's just like we have something in common. We like the stupid thing of poetry, and that's not something what is for maybe everybody, but Still, there are a lot more people. And I think if you would treat each other like in the poetry scene, it would not be so bad. I mean, you just, at least you accept each other. Okay, that was long enough, sorry. Well, thank, thank, you, for <laughs> thank you for defining our festival <laughs> theme. And, uh, and uh, uh, what the festival is all about is uh, like getting people together in a concrete way. And yeah. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, add, I found it very important, Svante, that you said it's a time for asking and listening. And I, what struck me here at the festival was that uh, you, Kalle, kept mentioning that, in fact, the festival had, had turned out very political without it really having been planned to be so political. And um, we have this common starting point, which is poetry, and then there was this starting point, like, maybe if you 
find a small denominate, common denominator, maybe it is acting against violence or trying to reduce violence. And, um, but still, then I thought if you have it so political and you have a common denominator, maybe the voices will become very similar and they will become very unified. But what we saw was something quite different. We saw, or at least I saw diversity. I saw a lot of diverse poetological starting points and a lot of different topics being addressed in a very different way. And I thought it, what it caused and what it showed was that diversity will always ca uh, cause friction also. It's not, it will not cause harmony, but it will cause friction. And this friction is about, I do not understand things, maybe I do not like things, but I can ask and I can try to listen and step towards the other and, and yeah, listen, like, like you said. And I think for me, this was very um, illustrative and is instructive also, because I think there is this tendency to confuse diversity with some kind of, melting pot harmony, but this is not what it is supposed to be or what it can be. And I think the chance is really in embracing these frictions and in embracing also the, really the conflict that is there. And for me, of course, with the festival, there is also a conflict because we had this motto, um, poetry for future, but um, this for future tag, which is really pointing towards the environmental issue, has hardly played a, played a role here. And so there are a lot of frictions I can I can I, I could name, and and I like it that they are there. Yes, so, yeah. I completely agree, and I think the panel agrees as well. And uh, um, of course, uh, the actual situation with the COVID. Uh, epidemic uh, overshadowed a lot of the problem and keeps overshadowing a lot of, uh, of problems. Um, let me get back to the, um, for a brief moment, for the getting together. The contrary of getting together is staying lonely, staying alone, being confined to your own home. And I felt, um, Birgit, uh, your contribution with your wonderful video yesterday that was sort of in your home and, and w felt like uh, uh, it was sort of very humorous in, in one way, or very, very light, but on the other hand, it felt as if you couldn't get out of your home, like if you were confined to the, to the rather tiny space that you were in. Had that something to do with the feeling that you have right now, um, the overall situation? In this situation, yes, because I couldn't go out. Um, uh, my Michael? No, no, sir, turn to the okay. camera. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and also, but uh, but also, I like to show that I really um, don't have control. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the picture and what I see, what I don't see, I, I didn't think about it, and that I try um, to, to to show this. I don't have control over this, but um, I'm here. And then, but the funny, yes, and I was a bit, little bit afraid to see it <laughs> later because I had only it on the on the on the handy. But I also would want to show that um, we are a little bit all maybe lost in, in, in our brains now. And so much um, thinking about um, the others and us and that the world is, um, yes, friction, a lot of frictions. And at the other side, every one of us is at home in the brain, like me in this video, yeah, in a way, and without control, any control. Uh, maybe one should explain uh, that later on after the festival, all the films and uh, everything that went on on the festival will be available. It will take some time until we uh, put it online so you can uh, eventually watch uh, the video again to confirm what uh, Birgit just said. And uh, just to remind you, the word hirni means like little brain. It took me a while to understand. Now, the contrary of that, uh, 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 st having to stay at home um, is like organizing small events and um, I'm switching to German right now asking Tristan about uh, his series of uh, poetry events. Uh, Tristan, dein, uh, ihr versucht mit den drei lyrischen, meinen drei lyrischen Ichs ja uh, kontinuierlich seit vielen Jahren Leute zusammenzubringen und uh, auch so eine Art Com Community entstehen zu lassen und uh, Wir sind ja umgeben von vielen e Events, die auf einmal aufpoppen 
äh, einem ein gutes Gefühl geben, von denen man dann aber nie wieder was hört, also die keinen bleibenden Einfluss hinterlassen. Hast du das Gefühl, dass jetzt mit, dein, mit, äh, einem, mit einer Serie, wie du sie auf die Beine gestellt hast, die ja über eine lange Zeit kontinuierlich was aufbaut, dass sich da was in einer anderen Form bewegen lässt, in kleinem Rahmen natürlich, aber trotzdem? Ähm, lass, mich, lass mich zweigeteilt antworten. Ähm, auf der einen Seite ist, wenn wir jetzt über die Situation in München sprechen, ähm, es unter den Dichterinnen und Dichtern so, dass tatsächlich es sich in so einer kleinen Art Gegenbewegung zu dem, was ähm, du gerade geschildert hast, so etwas entwickelt hat, was man, als für, was man bezeichnen könnte in, wie Literatur als soziale Praxis. Also sozusagen Literatur ist nicht nur das Schreiben von Texten im Privaten und das Rezipieren von Texten im Privaten, sondern es braucht, weil die Literatur, wie wir es gerade gehört haben, ähm, auch gesellschaftlich hochrelevante Dinge verhandelt, sei es im Modus, sei es konkret politisch, braucht es einen Raum, einen Raum wie hier, in dem wir darüber reden, in dem wir darüber, darüber uns austauschen und die Lesereihe, die wir machen, ist ein Beispiel unter vielen, wo sozusagen solche Räume mehr und mehr entstanden sind und wo eine Art ähm, kontinuierlicher Austausch ähm, dafür stattfindet. Und vielleicht um auf den Aspekt des Verhältnisses von ähm, Dichtung und diesen großen politischen Themen ähm, einzugehen, ähm, ganz konkret auf die Münchner Situation, kann ich vielleicht kurz erzählen, dass wir hier in München, ähm, also dass ich in München jetzt seit mh, vielleicht fünf, sechs Jahren ein Format veranstalte, das sich Kooperationen nennt, wo ich einfach alle möglichen Dichterinnen und Dichter der Stadt einlade und sie bilden Duos und haben nur die Aufgabe, Texte zu schreiben für fünf Minuten und äh, treten dann zusammen auf. Es gibt überhaupt keine inhaltlichen Vorgaben. Und diese Veranstaltung hat sich für mich so ein bisschen als, als ähm, Puls abnehmen, was beschäftigt die Lyrikerinnen und Lyriker gerade erwiesen über den Verlauf der Zeit. Und man kann sagen, dass sich ähm, die Inhalte, wenn ich mir die letzten fünf Jahre anschaue, es sind immer ungefähr 30 Leute auf der Bühne, das ist ziemlich viel, ähm, sehr politisiert haben. Also als wir angefangen haben 2015, war, ähm, waren politische Themen sozusagen ähm, Sachen, die einzelne Leute sozusagen beschäftigt haben und deren Schreiben war ein politisches Schreiben. Und über die Zeit, sei es Fragen von ähm, sozusagen, wie verhält sich Natur und Klima, sei es Fragen von, was ist Freiheit der Rede und so weiter und so fort, sind immer mehr rein ähm, gekommen und immer deutlicher geworden und man hat gemerkt, dass die Dichtung als etwas, was die Möglichkeit hat, Dinge anders zu verhandeln, sprachlich anders zu verhandeln, inhaltlich anders zu verhandeln, ähm, da dass sie das nicht unberührt lässt und das ist schon mal in ein erster Punkt, der mich, sehr, ähm, der mich sehr glücklich gestimmt hat, dass die Lyrik nicht so in so einem romantischen Sinne neben der Gesellschaft ähm, nebenbei schwimmt und äh, sozusagen ein bisschen schönen Ausgleich schafft, sondern dass sie, dass sie, dass sie sich damit auseinandersetzt und ähm, das hauptsächlich eigentlich in einem kritischen Sinne. Kann ich, kann ich dazu was sagen? Natürlich, bitte. Ähm, und, ich finde, und ich finde auch hier ist es wichtig zu betonen, dass auch hier nicht, es wird nicht das eine politische Gedicht geben, es wird nicht die eine politische Stimme geben, es gibt auch nicht die eine Lyrik, sondern es ist immer, also wenn es, wenn es dann heißt, ich höre das, ich habe das schon häufig gehört, wo sind denn diese, um, I switch back to English, where are these outspoken uh, poems? I, I, I want them, I miss them, I, I, I want the protest song. So, yes, You can have it, but I, I think it's, it's the wrong approach to say, to, to put it out as a demand, but again, to here allow for diversity, because there are in fact a lot of ways how to address political issues in, in a poem. And speaking about, speaking about the environmental topic, my personal idea is that their poetry in itself is a political action because it does not just tell a story from, from a distance, which makes it possible for you to, to keep it aside, but approaches language in a, in a totally different way that will directly interact with something like uh, what researchers have called the, the um, ecological imaginary or das, das ökologische imaginäre. So um, 
even in, in this very process of writing poetry, you can address layers that are usually not addressed in, in everyday language. So um, I think, again, it's important to listen and important also to, listening also mean is a process which you cannot speed up. So to allow for the time it needs to really meet up with, a, with another text, with another person, with another approach and see what's in it. And I mean, time is a, very, is a very big thing here. I mean, we've been here for hours and hours on end. So I, I find this yeah. great that you really, you enter, enter a different place and are out of the world. And well, that's yeah. what Augusta said when she uh, initially started the festival, that it's like a big wave and like a s basically like a sound installation, which it uh, approaches more and more clearly. Um, the voices are there. I, I, I totally agree with what you said again. And, um, um, but uh, they're sometimes uh, hard to hear and hard to encounter that they are actually there. Like um, uh, a couple of years ago, a record uh, appeared by Cecilia Vicuña, the uh, artist from Chile, a poet and visual artist who uh, attended the document, the last documenta, for instance. And she wrote a couple of uh, songs, uh, no, actually poetry, um, uh, in 2006 about the melting of the glaciers and the loss of the glaciers in Chile. That was back in 2006 when, when the discussion just about started. And I learned about these uh, poems like 10 or 12 years later. So um, sometimes you need somebody, you need some sort of means uh, that makes these messages, these poems, this, this possibility of, um, uh, of positioning yourself uh, to travel. This is, again, what this festival is about. Um, uh, coming back a little bit to the climate situation, that we are, again, also us, like, uh, it seems it the, the, the actual situation now with the, with the COVID is uh, overshadowing our, um, our attention span a little bit. And uh, the UN just last week uh, issued this drastic headline that the world is becoming un un an uninhabitable hell, eine unbewohnbare Hölle, für Millionen von Leuten, for millions of people, unless we take immediate action. They have never been that drastic before. So, um, and um, I read about it in, on CNN, but I didn't read about it here. I, it didn't ripple anywhere, it, uh, it seemed. And again, I learned about this like a week later, and I thought, well, they're starting to point out things like on a, on a different level now. Birgit, please. On it a little bit. Uh, therefore, I was thinking to myself, it maybe it, it's now time to be more outspoken and more uh, to, to, to dance on both sides, to do this job, this, not this, this writing, but also to speak with people who really know something and gather it and really spread it because this knowledge and um, in simple words and without any interest, always you get um, knowledge with a lot of interest packed in, toxic interest. And maybe it could be a way to, to, to get to knowledge with other people and let it know and have, um, yes, more, more outspoken, not hidden. I'm in this situation suddenly against, <laughs> it's, it's, it's strange for me, but maybe not so hidden um, information, more outspoken with wisdom in a way and, and, and knowledge and really listening, listening to people who know something and then trying to get it together. And also to, to th think about actions, little actions. Mm. So shall we take, uh, uh, as a Beispiel, as, a, um, as an example, um, what was happening in Hong Kong, like people getting together for uh, a long time uh, what we are actually um, uh, witnessing in Belarus, where people are continuously fighting against uh, the government in a peaceful way. That's, that's what I uh, uh, was referring to a couple of minutes before, that we saw a lot of um, s symbolic actions that uh, hit the headlines f for like five minutes and then it was over again. And Sometimes it seems as if uh, these, these kinds of demonstrations or 
whatever the action might be, is just um, it's just enough that it was there, and then you go on like like uh, every day. The um, the Fridays for Future, and that's that's where the um, for future tag um, came from. Uh, we're trying to uh, break that up by being a continuous movement that would be continuously seen and uh, like a continuous uh, little drag within the society uh, so we wouldn't forget about these issues and um, how do you see that you you came up with that poetry for future and i think that that was uh, the main background in the beginning or we all agreed on that because it it's it's like on a it, it's becoming on a very personal level that we don't feel yet bodily so to say physically um, when i when we talked about that like the the poetry for future i found it intriguing actually that um, there were there was this for future and then you would have a lot of other groups linking with it scientists for future and students and parents and i don't know what and then um but with with poetry it seemed the logical thing to to really say poetry for future and not po poets for future. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, it got me wondering why, why would that be? And now there has been a book out even called uh, Poetry for Future, uh, edited by, by Samuel Kramer and then appeared a few weeks ago in, in Satya Verlag, which mm -hmm. is with a big focus on spoken word. And um, so that, that intrigued me because I really think that there is a question there. Can, can poetry in a different way address these questions of time, climate change in a way that will not lead to these escalating strategies of warnings. I mean, I've heard about it, about climate change for the first time in the year 1992. And since then, I have seen little action, but I've, he I've seen escalating strategies of, of communication, like saying it will become an uninhabitable hell. So, yeah, and what's next? So um, I, th I think really the, the, um, the, the communication strategies have to change and um, like this approach of, of Fridays for Future is really important. Like you stress that you are constantly there all the time, every Friday, repeating, 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 like the narratives are being repeated, 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 repeated. Um, but the thing is, um, of course, there is now the big question mark with COVID, a lot of action can be taken very quickly. And um, with the climate crisis, obviously it can't. So where does this come from? And um, what are the interests behind that? And how, how do we get there to, to change this? And of course, I have no answer because I, if I had the answer, I wouldn't be sitting here, but I would do it. Exactly. Well, I started this panel out of a certain same feeling as you, like feeling a little bit um, helpless at times, which doesn't stop me from doing things, but still uh, the impact um, is uh, always the question what um, that leads to resignation very quickly with, with a lot of people that I see around me. But um, uh, what I found interesting is, uh, in the beginning, I thought poetry for future. No, we can't do this. Everybody is saying for future now. The advertisement was was on top of it, like immediately, like with every slogan that works, like really nicely. But for for reasons that I don't quite uh, have uh, focused on, uh, that faded away pretty quickly, and that for future tag didn't. Uh, didn't uh, get tiring for some reason. Uh, so that, that I found, it's a little thing that I found interesting. So you can still say that without being looked at uh, like an old boar or something. What do you think? Is there, is there a future for, for us, for, for who? The question with the climate change is, of course, uh, one of the big questions is uh, we have to act for something that we don't live up to, which is like the, the big hindering point for politicians, because nobody has to take responsibility. That's different with political issues. Oh, uh, just 
I just want to uh, no, say, no, no, say a little things about um, to um, buy some time for you guys to think about the so the, so the, the most difficult question about future. Um, I have one book uh, I taken to almost every festival I join because I, I I I know that I will face this question, but uh, but I never finished reading it. You see, what, what I read in the preface is. Uh, the book, uh, Terry Eagleton, uh, Hope Without Optimism. Hope Without Optimism. Okay. That, that I always just mm -hmm. finish the first page. I just say that, um, this, <laughs> I don't know why, for so many festivals. There's a lot uh, of hope in this. Because <laughs> 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 uh, 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 he said that uh, um, actually hope is not about, and, and it, re it really tells the difference between me as a poet and my friends as a po politician or political science scholars. And when we talk about hope, we are talking about different things. Um, and, and Terry Golden speak what I'm thinking. He said that uh, hope is actually not about things, of, not, uh, nothing about chances. There is nothing about chances. It's about faith. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, to me the question is, uh, quite easy to answer. Although Hong Kong is facing a very hard time and we will face, um, the, um, uh, I think, the, uh, uh, at least a period of time of uh, totalitarianism uh, ruling and my friends and uh, my friends and people at our door may get, uh, may put into prison and and some people can, can will be exiled and cannot go back to their home. And, but I have faith towards Hong Kong society. I, I, would, I have faith to, to Hong Kong, and I have faith to Hong Kong's uh, culture. Oh, so uh, does, 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 um, there's, so there does never be hopeless to me. Oh, so that maybe the in I uh, would change the question to the problem of um, problem of uh, climate change. What is our faith towards the future of uh, people, mm -hmm. pe human society? If we want to um, tackle this climate change thing, what is what is our faith? Is it will be um, uh, our um, our sons and uh, grandsons will be better better person, uh, better human being after just uh, um, in the coming future? What what is our faith towards that? Uh, I just want to ask you. Swanti, you wanted to add something to it? No, I was just fully agreeing just, just first adding. at all. <laughs> and I think it's, it's something very important. I mean, the idea of hope. And maybe I think to write poetry in the 21st century has to have a lot of faith in it because it's just something um, and also a lot of hope. And I think, like, like you said, that, that, that there is this generation which gives me a lot of hope. And that's the, the kids who go on the uh, uh, on the Friday for Future every Friday. And there, I think there is a generation coming up who is willing to really change something. And that's probably, uh, the, the, I mean, at, at least for me, it gives me a lot of hope. And I think also, I mean, I, 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 there's a lot of hope that nature for itself is really strong and I mean the I grew up I think I can never ever remember any day of my life that I was not aware that there is a problem and that there is there was an ecological I mean movement in the 80s of the last century so that's like 40 years ago I mean it's not nothing new in the idea that we ruin our our um, uh, planet so that's that's something that we all grew up with I mean and and who doesn't was probably not listening or asking again. And I think, and then on the other side, like, like you also mentioned, um, the COVID-19 situation, uh, there is, I mean, like, like Anya said, there is a lot of things that come, that, that, that this situation shows us that they, they can be, take, I mean, you can take action if you want to. Think the, all the, the, the things that come up with, uh, Airlines and cars, for example, in Germany, big discussion uh, why we do have to produce further on cars who destroy our, our nature. And you, you can just clearly see what the problem is. It's, it's just ecological, it's not ecological, it's, it's economical questions. And we all knew this uh, as, um, as well for centuries, or at least for one century. 
And I think, but the other thing that, that humans um, have is faith and hope and, and to continue that. And, and, and also a lot of these movements are going on right now in Hong Kong, the Black Lives Matters initiatives. I mean, there's so much things going on right now, uh, the Fridays for Future, like who are really trying to change things. And, and this gives me a lot of hope and, and, and faith. And, and I think that's something, um, it's not about my personal bodily experience in this life, whatever, maybe I come back uh, in another body, or maybe it's just about like some generations uh, of grandchildren uh, and, and grand-grandchildren. That doesn't matter, it's like just human to be worried. And I think even if you would listen to people who live closer to the nature, you would also know that that's not, I mean, a lot of people are suffering already because they don't have water and food and anything. And it's like only we privileged people in Europe think there's not at all. We have like good climate and water, but things changing and still be right. Yeah, sorry. Well, what clearly gives me hope is that we are here and uh, we won't go away. And if we ever should <laughs> choose Kalle, I'm not for, so the, sure about this. We for the moment, <laughs> the we encompasses the poetry body and the body of poets. The and uh, body. Yes, the, the planet nine, it's the planet of, uh, of the poetry. And um, thank you very much for joining us for this um, Ending up in faith and hope, that was sort of interesting. Uh, so I'm going to swallow my unfaithful comment I had to make, okay? In order no, to... No, no, don't, don't. To, <laughs> well, in this order is about to that you don't have to swallow it. note I'm of faith and hope. <laughs> what? 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 Repeat, please. <laughs> no, I was going to. I had. I had been wanting to ask for for a long time now. What do we do with all these things in, in society when when faith goes? not into the strength of society and the right things, but faith goes into conspiracy theories. What mm. do we do with this? When, when the faith is in, in all our institutions we have built up as a society is being lost because people don't, we can, we can tell them, we can, we can say it all outspokenly, but if people uh, or a considerable percentage of people do not believe the things that are uh, done in science and they will say, no, it's, not, uh, it's just not true, I choose not to believe it, then what do we do with it? I we, mean, it really first, we, we go back to page one. I think and read the first page of the book. <laughs> I mean, like it's, it's bro no, no, no. But I think that's what we do. That's what I do at least yeah. as well. I mean, you go back to page one and you try to believe there's something, there's something to believe in, uh, to, and, and to to have faith. And, maybe and I should. Maybe otherwise, it's just like. Maybe I yeah. should make a copy of your page one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the good thing is there are more pages to come. I mean, like, like that's also something that, that is important. Like. Aber jetzt mal, nur mal ganz, das mit dem, das mit der Hoffnung, ich finde, es fühlt sich, es hört sich an wie ein Trieb, wie ein menschlicher Trieb. Und mir ist der Trieb, also ich habe das jetzt gerade nicht. <lacht> ich will es auch mal sagen. Also, weil, dann ja, brauchst du halt auch dieses Buch und dann, die Seite 1. Ich habe hab die Seite 1 noch nicht. Ja, ich werde mir das ich von dir erklären lassen. Aber ich weiß nicht, ob Trieb reicht. Und vor allen Dingen, was macht Trieb. man denn? Der Trieb, ja, ich finde es ein Trieb. Doch, es ist ein Trieb. <lacht> I agree. <lacht> was? I agree. <lacht> Vielleicht werden wir diese anthropologische Frage nicht lösen. Maybe um, uh, it has become anthropological <laughs> in some way now. It's very interesting where things are branching out. Um, we uh, can uh, have them live wildly. Not and wild, wild is not a word that you should use, uh, but diverse and with wild. a lot of frictions and yeah. But no wild, exotism. wild meant, uh, meant in a, in a, uh, in a positive way, of course. But I found your, your, uh, the, the slogan that you mentioned um, hope without optimism could almost be like the motto for the next festival for which you would have to return. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. We, uh, things are developing until then. And uh, maybe we see each other then. Yes, yes, I and think um, so. all I of think us, of, of course, uh, if not here physically, but then streaming wise, uh, something that we had to discover uh, during this festival. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. Uh,
everybody who joined us um, online. We will take a very short break now for about 10 minutes and then we'll continue with the festival program. Thank you very much.